Hi everyone, hope you guys are doing well today. Uh, it's Vicki from Soul Studio bringing you your next video tutorial. Um, today we are going to do some water-based fabric dyeing. Mm -hmm. It'll be really fun. Um, we are going to need a few things that I'll get to in a minute. Um, but with this water-based fabric, fabric dyeing, sorry, with this water-based fabric dyeing, um, we're gonna try to not use anything that we wanna wear. So we're gonna use, or we're gonna do fabric dyeing for something that could be a wall hanging, uh, or maybe um, a something that you would put down on a table, but maybe not one that would get stained from food, um, or something like that. So it's really gonna be uh, kind of a more fine art based wall hanging and less of a garment that you could use for clothing or um, for, I don't know, for food decoration or something. Um, okay, I'm ready to get started. I bet you guys are too. So let's jump into it and I'll show you what you guys need. Okay, so for this tutorial, you will need a couple of rubber bands. I have three things of food coloring here. Um, I also have a red one somewhere else. We're just going to do one color for now. We're going to keep it simple. But while you're doing this, if you want to get experimental and use more than one color, feel free to do so. We are going to need a little bit of distilled vinegar. You don't need much. You can see I barely have any in here, but it'll get us through. And then I have three strips here that were just cut up from an old pillowcase. So they're not that long. Um, but they are pretty and they are white, which is the important thing here. As far as our fabric goes, we need white fabric that is 100% cotton. That's the most important thing, is this will only work on a natural fabric. So grab your materials and meet me back here. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is take some of our strips or take one of our piece of fabric um, and we're just going to have to fold it up. And that's what's actually going to give us our pattern when we start to dye our fabric. So I'm going to take one of my strips and if you're only doing one big piece, that's perfectly fine. You can, um, you can actually test out some of these different ways in different sections on the piece. Um, but I'm just going to start with some simple strips. That way I can do one kind of folding technique per strip um, and go from there. So this is kind of one end of my fabric, and then this is the other end. I really like that bottom end with the embroidery. So with this folding technique, I'm gonna start from this side, so that embroidery part is what's on the outside, hopefully absorbing the most dye. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm just gonna start to actually roll this up. Um, and what this is gonna do, hopefully, is we will submerge this into our dye just on one side. Maybe we'll flip it over at some point and get the other side too. Um, but the bottom part, this part, is going to absorb much more dye than that interior part that we rolled up. So I'm gonna go ahead and roll this all the way up like this. Ba -ba -da -ba. Um, and then I'm actually just going to tie three rubber bands around it. One at the bottom here, another one here, and then another one in the, in the, uh, on the other end. And a lot of times what these rubber bands do is actually stop the dye from absorbing into those sections. So hopefully we will have kind of a white line created here and a white line created over here. One thing I want you guys to just kind of keep in mind about this fabric dyeing, dyeing is since we aren't using any chemicals, um, our fabric dye is going to be pretty pale, so you're not going to get really vibrant colors, really bright colors that you would find at the store. Um, we're going to uh, we're going to dye things, and they're going to be a little bit more pale. So if you like pastels, this is a video for you. Okay, so here I have one piece that's all ready to go. I'm going to show you two more folding techniques, and then we're going to get to dyeing. So our next folding technique um, is pretty similar to our first one, um, but instead of rolling, this time we're actually gonna fold things. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and fold my fabric in half long ways. And then I'm gonna fold my fabric in half the other way so it gets really skinny. 
And then I'm gonna fold my fabric again, kind of like how we rolled it from one end to the other, but instead of rolling it, we're going to fold it. And I'm gonna try to fold it in kind of even lengths all the way down to the end. And this time I'm gonna do a similar thing with my rubber bands, but I'm just going to maybe put them on either side like that. But I still want them to stay pretty tight. So I'll do one there and then I'll do one here. And if rubber bands are tricky for you, you can do this with a little bit of twine instead. Um, you could do it with a hair tie. There's a lot of different ways you could do it. You could also even experiment with no rubber bands and just see how that goes, okay? So here is our second technique, okay? We got one more to do. Okay, our third technique. This is a really fun one. I'm just gonna take this piece of fabric and crumple it up into a ball. Squish it, squish it, squish it. Kind of hold it there and then I'm gonna take a lot of rubber bands and I'm gonna wrap them all around here um, so that they just kind of hold this big bunched up fabric in place. Okay, so now we have our three pieces of fabric, our three different dyeing techniques. Let's get our dye going and get these pieces all colored up. I forgot to mention we're also gonna use a stove. Um, we don't need it for very long, so if uh, you're comfortable using the stove, then perfect. If not, why don't you ask your parent or guardian or someone around to help you out, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is add equal parts water and vinegar to this pot. My pot isn't on right now, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on. And then I'm gonna pour in, I'm using just a quarter cup because I'm gonna do small amounts of Thai. So I have a quarter cup of vinegar and a quarter cup of water. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add 10 drops of food coloring. And I'm using blue for this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And give that just a stir. And if I like that color, great. If I want something a little bit more intense, I can go ahead and add maybe one, two, three more. Okay, I'm gonna wait for this to come to just a nice boil. Um, and in the meantime, I'm gonna grab a glass cup or a, um, some kind of dish so that I can dunk my fabric. Okay, so my water is boiling. I am going to take my first piece of fabric and just kind of tuck it in to, I have just a little glass bowl here. So I'm gonna tuck it in I'm going to grab my pot holder and I'm going to bring my dye over here and just pour it along my fabric. Just let some of those bubbles cool down and there we go. And you can intentionally miss some spots if you want there to be a little bit more white in your fabric dye. Um, or if you want to make sure the whole thing is covered, then feel free when you're pouring to make sure that you get it all over that fabric. Um, and if your fabric is kind of not totally submerged in the dye like mine is, then you can go ahead and take a spoon or um, another kind of utensil and just push it down a little bit. But remember, the water's hot, so don't touch it with your fingers. 
We're gonna let this sit in here for um, about five minutes. Um, I like to let it sit in there for five minutes because I like a good amount of white and a lot of kind of variation in my fabric dye. If you want something that's a little bit more kind of covered with a nice consistent um, coloring, then you can leave it in there for even longer. What I'm also gonna do, just a little trick, is now with that food coloring again, I'm gonna take just a couple drops and put it directly on the fabric to make some really saturated areas. Um, maybe there I'll do one. Oh, I got two there. Here along the edge, maybe I'll do one. Oh, two again. And we'll just do one there. So now we're gonna let this sit for five minutes. Again, you can let yours sit for anywhere from five minutes to overnight if you want. It's totally up to you. Okay, so it's been five minutes. Um, you can see all of the dye in my uh, in my bowl has been rinsed out, which is or has been absorbed into my piece of fabric, which is great. Um, the liquid is no longer hot anymore, so this is perfectly safe to touch. Um, if you don't want to get dye on your hands like I have, then I would recommend wearing a pair of gloves. If you don't mind, then jump right in. Um, I'm going to rinse this in cold water and I'm gonna take all these rubber bands off. I'm not going to rinse it too thoroughly because I want a lot of that dye to stay in here. And remember, this is water-based dyeing. So if I rinse it too much, I'm gonna rinse all that dye out of there and I'm gonna have a white piece of fabric again. So I'm just gonna do a quick rinse. I'm gonna get these rubber bands off. And then once my fabric can be rolled back out, I'm gonna do another quick rinse under the sink. And I'm just gonna do a kind of a gentle squeeze at the end to get as much of that kind of excess water out. But we already now can have some idea of what our fabric is gonna look like or what our dye is gonna look like. Keep in mind, this is gonna be much more vibrant, much more bright than it's gonna end up. Once we rinse this water out, you guys can already see how blue my hands are getting, so. I'd recommend wearing gloves. Um, once we rinse this under the cold water, it's gonna take a lot of this dye out, so it is going to uh, soften the color quite a bit, so just be warned. So again, I'm not gonna do too thorough of a rinsing, because I want as much of my dye to stay in here as possible. And I'm using cold, cold water here. Okay, I feel like I got a lot of the excess dye out. I'm gonna give this one good squeeze. And that's it. So, I have quite a bit of color left in here. As you guys can see, I have these really bright spots at the corners where I rolled. Um, and then my whole, my kind of overall fabric has a nice blue tone to it right now in some spots where it actually even goes green, which is pretty cool. I'm going to stick this right into my dryer that I use for my laundry so that I can dry it up and set that uh, fabric dye or set that water-based dye um, so that it will stay in there. If you don't have a dryer, that's perfectly fine. You can always hang this to dry in your basement or outside. Uh, just make sure. Um, you know, it's pinned to something so that it doesn't blow away. Okay, I'm gonna toss this in the dryer and then meet you back here to see the finished product. And finally, our results. So, they look really great. Um, you can see the fabric has absorbed a lot of the dye. The colors are pretty consistent. Um, I think it looks really nice, especially for an old bed sheet that I was gonna throw away. Um, the great thing about fabric dyeing in this way is if you don't like your results, you can always repeat the process and see what different results you get. Um, I, also, I also actually want to just show you a couple more things over here. So as you know from the video, all of, the, whoops, all of those colors were from food coloring. These three colors here, this one is actually from chili powder. This is from coffee. The results weren't great, but you can see there is a little bit of kind of dyeing and, and the change of color that happened here. So you can see there's a stripe there and a stripe there. This one's pretty subtle. And then this one here is actually from beet juice. Um, so I had a couple of kind of soft beets 
uh, in my fridge left over from going food shopping um, and I just boiled them and got some really rich uh, colored water kind of like a really deep purple pinkish color um, and then just did the same thing with that but with beet juice instead of food coloring um, I'll post these ratios with kind of a little document that gives you all the info about how to do this tutorial. Okay friends, congratulations! You made it through another fabric dyeing video. Uh, hopefully your hands didn't end up as green as mine did. I would definitely recommend those gloves, but hey, we're supposed to be washing our hands a lot anyway, right? Um, so. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you get really great results from your fabric dyeing. Please share them uh, with our friendships uh, bleh, with our friendship circle Soul Studio group uh, on Facebook, and you guys know where to email them to Mia, to Anthony, to me, whatever. Doesn't matter. They'll all go to the same place. Uh, okay, have a wonderful week. Enjoy your time off.